Hi, I'm Nadine Neff. I'm a master gardener and a member of the Georgia Native Plant Society. The opinions expressed here are my own. In this presentation, I want to introduce all of you to plants found in the USA, which are either native or have been brought in to be used ornamentally. Many can kill a human or cause serious damage. The focus is only on the effects to people, not animals. Also, I am not advocating anyone take this information and conduct their own experiments or use with deadly intent. Before we get started, there's probably going to be some terms that I'm using within this presentation that are interchangeable. Um, poison um, or poisonous is a substance that can cause harm to organisms when sufficient quantities are absorbed, inhaled, or ingested. And poison has long been used as a weapon of choice for humans. Poison usually refers to biological agents, but it can also be used interchangeably with toxin. Toxin is a kind of poison from an animal or a plant and toxic substances were only recently classified and regulated. This first picture is of the manchineel. This is a flowering plant in the spurge family. It's also sometimes called beech apple. The range is in the tropical southern part of North America to northern South America. The manchineel is the most toxic tree in the world. The milky white sap contains numerous toxins and can cause blistering. It's been said that even standing under the tree when it's raining can cause the skin to blister. The sap is found in every part of the tree, so this includes the bark, the leaves, and the fruit. Smoke from burning the leaves can cause blindness. One bite of the fruit causes blistering. While you will probably only encounter this plant in parts of Florida or further south, it's interesting that this killer tree is found in North America. Some of the most familiar killer plants are already identified with poison in the names, poison ivy, poison oak, poison sumac, easily come to mind. These plants aren't really poisonous, but the sticky oil called arushiol causes an itching, blistering rash, which I'm sure most of us are familiar with. Even the slightest contact, like brushing up against the leaves, can transfer the oil. If you burn the leaves and it, they put out chemicals that can bother the eyes, nose, or lungs, and if you breathe the smoke, you may need medical attention. The old adage, leaves of three, let them be, is a good rule to follow. Poison hemlock in Georgia is primarily found from 15,000 feet to 5,000 feet elevation. The natural range is from southern Canada around the Great Lakes, down the eastern side into the Appalachian Mountains, into northern Georgia and Alabama. This plant is becoming very invasive all across the US. It's not to be confused with Queen Anne's lace, which is a member of the carrot family, which is not toxic, but the flowers do look similar. Human poisoning typically occurs with children playing with the stems or adults mistaking it for a similar looking edible species. If this plant sounds familiar, this one is alleged to have been used to kill Socrates in ancient Greece. This is a photo of the lovely wolfsbane, also known as monk's hood. It's a perennial herb, often grown as, as an ornamental for the dark blue to dark purple flowers. I had no idea that this plant is poisonous and I rescued some on a property that was being developed. I have it in my garden this year and it's actually bloomed. All parts of the plants, especially the roots contain toxins. The neurotoxins can be absorbed through the skin and can cause severe respiratory and cardiac problems. It's been found that a two milligram dose of aconitine, one of the toxins, can cause death within four hours. Large doses can cause instantaneous death. In April of 2019, the president of Kyrgyzstan promoted aconite root as a treatment for COVID-19. At least four people suffered from poisoning and were admitted to hospital. This is the castor oil plant or castor bean. 
It's also a member of the spurge family like the man manchineal tree. It is the most poisonous plant in the world, according to the Guinness Book of World Records. Just one milligram of the plant's poison can kill an adult, according to the CDC. The seeds contain ricin. This is native to East Africa around Ethiopia, but has become a weed in many places, including the Southwest US. It's grown, it has been grown as an exotic in the ornamental gardens. It's estimated to be 6,000 times more poisonous than cyanide and 12,000 times more poisonous than rattlesnake venom. As few as four seeds can kill an average size adult. This is oleander. I'm sure many of us who've been in Florida or California have seen this plant or quite often it's grown as a house plant. It's a, grown as a shrub or a small tree found primarily growing in temperate areas. Taking the leaf, leaf tea, or seeds can lead to deadly poisoning. The word oleander appears as far back as the first century AD. There are an estimated 25 million oleanders planted along highways and roadsides in California. It's also grown as, as an ornamental in gardens. And while it's extremely bitter, ingestion is rare. The angel trumpet shown here in pink, but it comes in other colors, particularly white and yellow. All parts of the plant are considered poisonous. It's also in the nightshade family. It's part of the nightshade family. Ingestion can cause hallucinations, paralysis, tachycardia, memory loss, and can be fatal. Some people have used it as a recreational hallucinogen. Personally, I think it's pretty to look at, but not to touch. Georgia is home to several species of mushrooms. Personally, I haven't gotten too involved in mushrooms and um, since I'm not an expert by any means, I haven't, uh, I certainly don't go looking for them to use in cooking or eating. This lovely one called Destroying Angel, if it's ingested, can be deadly. The symptoms often don't appear until six to four, 24 hours after eating, and it's considered among the most toxic known mushrooms. The autumn skull cap, sometimes called funeral bell, can't imagine why, deadly skull cap, or deadly galernia, causes vomiting, diarrhea, hypothermia, liver damage, and can result in death if left untreated. I wanted to thank everyone again for taking the time to look at this presentation and exploring the world of killer plants with me. So many of them are lovely to look at, but so deadly to hold. I hope you'll take this opportunity to look further into plants that are grown in our area here in Georgia and um, surrounding states, as well as um, our native plants of which so many are, are lovely and so beneficial to our landscapes and our, um, our environment.